Hey everybody. Well, uh, I started a video. I got 12 minutes in and Petra was just so distracting. I had to lock her up in the bedroom. Now, my daughter had suggested that. My One of my cousins suggested that I use her as a mascot for my YouTube channel. But she was just, she was so annoying. <laughs> So I put her in the bedroom, and I don't know if she'll stay in there quietly or she's going to scratch at the door. I don't know. But anyway, today I want to do this video for my, my little brother. He's six years younger than me, and he said he doesn't remember the little house that, you know, that we lived in. Uh, he doesn't remember the first house and um, so I thought, well, I'll do a little timeline for him to, you know, fill in some of the gaps. Uh, when my parents bought this property in 1943, they um, built a, a little house. It was very small. I, I can remember the layout of it because I, as a teenager, I spent a lot of time over there with, with someone that lived there. And, um, but we lived in that little house until about, I would say, mm, 1957 or 1958. And, uh, the, the little house was on the east side of the property. And then Daddy built a bigger house and we lived on the west side of the property. Uh, and we moved into that house in, well, I guess it was my sister, let's see, between 58, 1958 and 1960. I don't remember the exact date. <clears throat> uh, but in January of 1960, we were visiting my maternal grandparents uh, in town, and the cat hair, oh, <laughs> sorry. Um, we were visiting my grandparents, and our neighbor across the street called, and my mother answered the phone, and uh, she started crying. And I remember leaning into her lap, and I was going, what's wrong, Mommy? What's wrong? And come to find out, our house had burned to the ground. The only thing that was saved from that house was the washing machine. And... We used that washing machine for 12 years after after that fire. It had little uh, tar drips on it. You could still see them on there. Uh, but so we ended up living with my uh, maternal grandparents for about nine and a half or ten months. Um, and because they lived in town in a little subdivision or whatever, uh, there were always lots of kids to play with. And I just thought it was, I thought it was great, you know. I don't remember my sister coming out and playing because she's, she's almost three years younger than me. So I guess she had to play mostly in the house or right there just outside so Mama could watch her. But I had free, free reign of the little neighborhood we were in. And, uh, and I really, I really enjoyed that. Um. Uh, but by September of 1960, it was time for me to start first grade. Back then, they didn't have kindergarten or Head Start or any of those programs. So my daddy would drive me from all the way in town, all the way out to the little school out in the country. And I asked him one time, I said, well, how long did you do that? And he said, oh, about three weeks. So it really wasn't very long. It seemed like a long time to me, but it, but it wasn't. So in late September, early October of 1960, we moved into the house that I'm in right now. And uh, it was uh, built similar, you know, had just a little different, but not much. The basic floor plan, kind of a ranch style house. And um, 
you know, I, I remember when my brother was about four. This may be embarrassing to him. I'm, I'm sorry, brother. When he was about four, my sister and I decided that he was dirty. He, his skin was so brown. So we put him in the bathtub and tried to scrub all that dirt off of him. <laughs> but he, we had Cherokee ancestry. And so his skin was darker, you know. And mine is kind of an olive, but but he really was darker, had dark dark hair, and uh, but it didn't come off. But uh, I stayed at this house until I was about nineteen, and then I then I moved away from home, and uh, he was uh, he got married young or younger than me. I was the last, uh, I'm the oldest, but I was the last one to get married. So, uh, you know, we didn't have a lot of time except for, you know, from when he was born until I turned 18, 19 and left home. And he and his wife ended up uh, moving to, over the years, have lived in several different states. So I haven't had his... Uh, close at time with him as I have with my sister because my sister lives next door and uh, but I when my brother sent me that message on Facebook I felt bad that he didn't have you know certain memories or didn't know the timeline because I'm the family historian I've been doing genealogy for 40 plus years and I told him, I said, well, I, I'll try and fill in the gaps for you, you know. Uh, but but I would have to say, my, my father built this house. He built the one that burned, and he built the little house. But, you know, he didn't know anything about construction and carpentry or anything like that. And so what he did was he, uh, there was a subdivision vision being built in town and he went to each foreman on each job and asked them what are you doing why are you doing it how do you do it you know i mean you know why are you digging that that square hole there well this is the foundation and then you put this in and this is how you do the framing and you know all that so he he did all of it himself he did have help uh, with the basement, uh, he had help. A uh, couple other things I don't quite remember, but uh, he even did the wiring himself. This is back in the '60s, where you know, wasn't a lot of code going on. But I can remember, you know, especially during the summer, uh, he would he would come out after he got off work, and you know, he'd be building the house. And I would get to come with him, you know, being the oldest. Uh, I turned six that summer. And uh, we would come out, and he'd be working. And I remember the, the property. You could look all around. You could just see so far away. And it seemed, you know, as a little girl, it seemed so very high, you know. And um, it would get dark, and Daddy would keep working he had a drop light you know and uh you could see all the stars and, and i i just i loved it i loved playing uh out on the well not the deck what would you call it when you have uh you had the joist and then you had the plywood on top of that it's bef before the uh two by fours went up and everything you know and it was such freedom you know and of course we'd get hungry and uh mama had packed us uh, you know bologna sandwiches and uh, but i got to do that quite often and and still to this day when i smell lumber or go to a lumber yard i i love that i love the smell of that it just brings back so many <clears throat> pleasant memories for me and uh, you know 
it's uh I guess that's why I love this house so much. I, I remember asking my mother when I was 13. I asked her, I said, Mama, when, when you and Daddy are gone, can I have this house? <laughs> I, I, I don't remember her her reply at the time, but, but you know, I, I ended up getting the house and gave my sister, let her have an extra few, few acres, you know, because I got the house. But... Um, it it means a lot to me, and uh, and I remember somebody was going to come by the house one time and bring uh, bring me some uh, raw honey, and I, I told them I was describing where I lived, and I said, and the house has redwood siding on it, and he said okay, and so he knocked on the door. I answered the door. He said, it really is redwood siding. I said, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't have it anymore. I have siding up because I, as a widow, I didn't think I would, I, I wasn't going to be staining that redwood, you know, keep it, keeping it up. It was too much for me. But the, but the inside behind me is uh, tongue and groove paneling, and that is sassafras. And the reason Daddy chose sassafras was because it was the cheapest thing he could get. And we used to have uh, Jalloway's windows, the kind, you know, like they have in mobile homes, the little slats, you know. We did have those, but when I moved in here, uh, I had the windows replaced because the other ones were so old and there was just, I mean, you could feel the wind blowing in, you know. And, uh, mm, I don't know if there's anything in particular that's unique. Uh, it's a ranch style house. Um, and one wall at the end uh, of the living room down there, one wall is uh, brick and it used to have a fireplace in it. And uh, I can remember daddy taking uh, our blankets at night when we we're getting ready to go to bed. He'd hold the blankets up in front of the fire, let them get real hot then roll them up in a ball and bring them back to us while we were in bed and you know put those hot blankets on it and it just felt so good you know but then again as a widow uh, my brother-in-law suggested that I get a propane heater uh, inserted in there so he put one of those in there for me and although I, I, I love a fire when you grow up with a uh, an open fire or fireplace or anything uh, you you get used to feeling that you know you back up to it you know let one side roast and then you turn around and let the other side roast for a while there's just nothing like an open flame uh, to warm you up you know you don't you don't get that same feeling when you're you know in a home that blows out warm air or propane but i am thankful that i have that propane heater it's it's uh it's been a blessing to me um uh, and uh my uh my oldest daughter uh, i gave her five acres and uh, i said you know you could build a home i, I was being a manipulative mother i took advantage of being a mother, I gave her five acres, and she built a house at the front of the driveway. So if I, you know, get much older than I am now and can't get around or I fall or something, she won't have far to go to come and pick me up or take care of me or whatever, you know. So I do have my sister next door and my daughter at the front of the driveway. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'd like to do some more memory things. I just need to get my brother to ask me some questions and, uh, I'll try to fill in the blanks for him, but, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was pleasant, uh, growing up here. Uh, there weren't. I mean, I, I saw kids when I went to school. I saw kids when I went to church. 
there weren't a lot of neighborhood kids. There was one uh, family across the street had a, a one of their sons was a year younger than me, and he and I would you know play games. I go there and play games, or uh, we'd take a walk out in the woods or whatever. And a lot of times, uh, his mother would uh, say, "Would you like to stay for dinner?" And I said, well, I'll, I'll have to call home and ask. And I would call, and Mama would say, yes, you can do that. And so I would stay. And the fascinating thing was was that uh, this mother would cook uh, sausage, breakfast sausage, as the meat for their dinner. She'd have regular vegetables or whatever, but she would have sausage patties. I thought that was so cool. I I'd only had sausage for breakfast, you know. And uh, it's funny that after many, many years later, I mean, she was, she had died long ago. And I was talking to her son one day. He still lives over there. And we got to talking about genealogy. And he said, well, my sister did some, you know, genealogy. And... And he said, would you like to see it? And I said, well, of course, you know. So I looked at it and got to looking in there. Come to find out. Now, his mother was born in Florida. And uh, her ancestors, some of her ancestors were born in uh, Mississippi, as were some of mine on my father's side. And... Uh, we had. I got to looking through that book, and there were some common names. I haven't connected whether or not they're like how related they are, but uh, I'm actually related to them. You know, distant, distant, distant cousins. And I thought, oh, it's such a small world, isn't it? But I, I do remember when when I'd say, "Can I go next door?" And she'd say, well, yes, you can go, but don't wear out your welcome. I heard that a lot. Don't wear out your welcome. So, you know, uh, the neighbor mama, she she enjoyed having me over there, you know. And uh, she, was, she was fun, you know. Uh, they always had a fish tank. And I always enjoyed looking at that. And, uh, she would play Yahtzee with us, and uh, yeah, I didn't. We didn't play Yahtzee at home. Uh, Daddy had invented a couple of card games, you know. Uh, and I remember when I was thirteen, I got my first Scrabble game. But I think Daddy was not. He was really not into uh, games very much, you know, and. And I don't care much for games myself. I, 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 don't, I, I love playing Scrabble. And I like putting puzzles together. But uh, other than that, you know, things like Monopoly. And I remember playing Candyland with my oldest daughter. And I thought, oh, oh I, just, I, just, I don't want to play it. I don't want to do it. But I did it and had a good attitude about it and everything. But, um, yeah, I just would rather do something else and uh i think the something else that my daddy liked doing was reading he he read a lot of just uh there were always books around and uh he liked uh had several magazines that he liked you know discovery magazine psychology today some kind of he was kind of science oriented you know he liked that and, uh, but, you know, we, we did have a garden, Daddy. Uh, when I was little, we had a garden on the east side of the house, um, I guess from when we had lived in the little house. And I can remember out, being out there in the garden, had a little fence around it. And I remember him picking butter beans one day and I was, I was walking down the long driveway that, you know, went past the garden and the barn and all that. And uh, I had a little black and white banning chicken 
It was my pet. He followed me around, you know. Uh, and then when we moved over here on the west side of the property, we didn't have a garden for a long time. And I think after all of us kids had left, uh, Daddy started a garden again. And uh, so when my husband and, got, and I got married, we got married in this house, uh, my mother uh, made my wedding cake. It was a strawberry cake. And uh, it, the strawberries came from Daddy's garden. And, uh, you know, strawberry cake and strawberry shortcake are kind of a... Uh, a tradition in in this family, in my immediate family. Uh, my daddy, when he was five years old, uh, his his parents had died when he was two and a half. They died uh, as a result of influenza, you know, that went around in the, that time, 1917, 18, 19. And so he was raised by his maternal grandparents, uh, and his grandfather died when he was nine. But when when Daddy was about five years old, uh, my great grandmother they called he called her Balm B A L M. That was his name that he called her was Balm. Uh, I don't know where the nickname came from, but so she started uh, making him strawberry shortcake on his birthday every year which is in may and he had every year he had strawberry shortcake uh during world war ii there were a couple of years that uh of course you know with rationing uh he didn't get the strawberry shortcake uh then after the war uh he was able to get the uh strawberry shortcake and my mother would make it for him every year and uh there were a couple of times when mama went on vacation with her uh her sister and she was gone during the time that it was daddy's birthday and she told my sister and i she said you make sure your father gets his strawberry shortcake I said, yes ma'am yes ma'am we made sure he got his strawberry shortcake on his birthday and then uh, after my mother passed away, my sister and I took turns having Daddy over for supper. You know, one night at her house, one night at my house. So it, whatever day his birthday fell on, whether it was my sister's turn or mine, we made sure he got his strawberry shortcake. So Daddy was 89 when he passed away. So for seven years of his life, he didn't have strawberry shortcake. So that would be 82 years that he had strawberry shortcake on his birthday. And so my brother, he and his family have a tradition. Uh, my sister-in-law or my niece uh, make him a strawberry cake on his birthday every year. And they're beautiful cakes. I mean, when I made them, they're just plain old strawberry cake, put the icing on there and everything. But uh, they fancy it up, decorate it real pretty and all that. And he always posts a photo of it on Facebook. And I'm thinking, mm, boy, that sure looks good. I'd love to have a slice of that with some coffee. That would be really good. But, you know, those kind of traditions... Uh, those traditions mean something in your family, and uh, it's just nice to pass along those little stories, you know, so that everybody knows why. It's not just strawberries or shortcake or strawberry cake, you know, there's meaning behind it, and it helps people to feel, uh, to feel closer or you know, to mean something. Uh, nowadays, you know, we can we can buy anything we want anytime we want, you know. And when I was little, you only got certain things at certain times of the year. So when you got it, it was really special, you know. Once a year, we had fruitcake. My mother would make it at Christmas time, and she had it in this tin uh, uh, cake uh 
what do you call it? I can't even think of it now, you know, but it, it's metal. I still have it. And uh, she would put it in that thing and, and she'd wrap it in cheesecake and then soak it in bourbon. She was always getting it out and, you know, unwrapping it and putting the all that uh, liquor on there and everything. And then it came Christmas time, time to eat it. And it was so, it was so good. It was moist and tasty, you know, not like the, not like the ones that people make fun of, you know. I mean, this was a true yummy fruitcake, you know. And, uh, but it was special because we only got it once a year. So, you know, if you have traditions in your family, you know, talk about them to your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, and tell them why it's special. Um, I, I can't remember uh, what else. Uh, and I don't, I don't remember what kind of birthday cake I had. I guess it wasn't as important to me or but I I do remember uh, on Valentine's Day uh, we wake up go to the breakfast table and each one of us had a card I think even my brother had a card it was a Valentine's card had our name written on it it was already in the place where we sat at the table and and daddy did that every year daddy was kind of a from my perspective, I can't speak for my brother or my sister, but my daddy, oh gosh, and I look, I look just like it. I, I would rather look like my mother, <laughs> but I don't. I look like my daddy. My brother and sister favor my mother and her side of the family. I favor daddy. Um, but, uh, oh. I forgot what I was saying. I was talking about the Valentine's cards, and uh, but yeah, that's uh, that just seems so long ago. And when I was a kid, thinking about somebody in their region seventy years old, man, that just it seems so old. But I don't feel old inside. You know, I feel. I mean, you got your aches and pains and stuff like that, but I don't feel, uh, in my mind, I don't feel old, you know. Uh, so, I, I don't know. Uh, you see this little, uh, this jewel tree here? Uh, I had to move it because it's, I have it sitting over there and the sun hits on it and all my little jewels are coming off of it. But my... My sister-in-law and I did that, and uh, it's not something I would do on my own. I am not a crafty person. Put me in a kitchen slaving over the stove all day, I, I can do that. But crafty things, I'm not good at. And so she and I were both going to be uh, at her mother's for, uh, I don't know, four or five days. And so she brought this project up for us to do. And I'll tell you, I really enjoyed doing it. it. It's not something I would do on my own, but I really had a fun time doing it. I, I did that one, and then I said, you know, I, I'd love to do another one. And so I did, and uh, it's it, it's kind of uh, blues and greens. and uh, So, you know, I just need a little a little push, you know, but I, I, I won't do it on my own. You know, and this artwork around me, I, I haven't done any of this. Uh, that one right there, my great great aunt did that one. It's an oil painting of a scene from Oklahoma. And that one right there is a pencil drawing. It's not very clear, it's a pencil drawing of some flowers that my sister did when she was in high school. And that one, my sister-in-law did that one. It's a, a hummingbird, and it's a little, little paper that's coiled up, and you make a, you 
fill it in to make whatever you're doing, you know. And then the one above my head, there's poppies right there. Uh, my sister-in-law, was, she did that for me, I don't know, it's a long time ago. I said, oh, I would love to have George O'Keefe's poppies. And so she, she did that one for me. And then this one over here, uh, my cousin Woodeen did that one. She's deceased now. But she liked to paint. And uh, so I had that. And I have a couple other things around. Uh, my sister-in-law also did this. This one is a lighthouse. I guess over, over time I will perhaps move things around and put different things up there. I have to be careful because I have three cats and one of them, little girl, she's bigger than Petra and Edith. And she'll get up on those shelves and she has knocked stuff over. This one right here, it was an, it's an old print of a pheasant. It's got a very heavy frame on it. And I had it sitting up, up top on one of those shelves. And I heard a loud noise, and I thought, oh, I know what that is, because I, I had not hung it. It was just leaning against the wall. And I came up here, and I looked down on the floor, and there it was, face down. And I thought, oh, I don't even want to look. And I didn't for about two weeks. I just pretended like it wasn't even there. <laughs> Avoidance issues. So finally one day, I, I bent over and I picked it up, there was no crack in the glass. The frame hadn't chipped or anything like that. And I thought, oh, I paid, for me, I paid a lot of money for that. I'm not putting it back up there. So I have it tucked in there where it can't get knocked over. But uh, but that's what I mean when I say I like art. This is all family things that, you know, the family has done. And uh, my oldest daughter was at Goodwill one day and she happened to look over in another room they had. She was in the checkout line, but she looked over. She saw this painting. I don't know. It's probably it's probably a three by four or something. It's uh, it's Monet or is it Monet? Their names are so close together, but it's a girl in a poppy field. It's huge. And she said, uh, I see it. Would, would you want it? And I said, yes. And so she brought it over. I hung it on the wall. It's not properly hung, but I happen to have some nails in there. You know, when you have sassafras uh, tongue and groove paneling, you, you can put a nail in it anywhere. So the nails are already there, so I hung it up. But uh, I don't know. I like I like art. I don't know if it's because I, I have aphantasia or or not I, you know I don't really I'm not uh, much of I don't draw much or anything like that but um, I like I like art I like going to our local museum and looking at the paintings and I I have my favorites and uh, but I don't know and it I don't look at art like some people do you know they talk about the lighting and <clears throat> the brush strokes and the you know all the technical aspects of it and everything i i just look at it and say that's pleasing to me and i like it that's what i know about art and it's like you know you go into hobby lobby and you're flipping through all the uh the prints you know and i'll be flipping through there and i go oh i like that. That's so pretty. And I lift it up and I go, oh, it's Renoir. And, and I always do that when it's Renoir. I always go, oh, I really, oh, that just, oh, I just feel something for that one. That is really beautiful. And, uh, and it's always Renoir. So I guess I like Renoir, you know. I couldn't tell you why, you know. I don't, I don't know, but I do. So, and and I'll confess, I don't like Picasso. I don't like Picasso at all. And I let my 10th grade art teacher know that. And she didn't, she was not happy with me. I was in art class. I was expecting to learn to be able to draw and to paint or do, you know, create something beautiful. 
she, I, I get impatient, you know. She she had us drawing circles and cones and all that, you know. And I said, "Why are you having us do this?" I said, "This is this is not art." And she said, "Well, you have to learn these to be able to do the other." And I thought, "No, I don't. I'm just not happy with this." And we ended up. I I said, I I, I even forget how it started, but I said, I said something about Picasso, or she said something about Picasso. I said, well, he's not an artist. I said, he doesn't, you look at his stuff, you don't even know what it is. And she didn't like that attitude. But I can, I can say I do not like abstract art. And, you know, it's true what they say, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and I've seen some paintings where it, it just looks like somebody splashed paint on a canvas and people are just enamored with it. And I've seen a few pieces and I think it must be the the colors that I'm looking at that, that are pleasing to me because I have a, a friend uh, who actually, when he was in college, he took art classes and uh, in his latter years he started painting and that's the kind of thing that he does you know and a couple of his pieces I thought were just beautiful you know but uh, I, I am I'm more realistic I, when I look at it I want to know that it's a tree I want to know that it's a flower you know so but that's that's just me you know and everybody can like whatever kind of art they want well I'll tell you, there's one that really bothers me. At the, at the museum that I like to go to, up on the second floor, there is a, a white canvas, and on that canvas is a tiny red dot. Little bitty, you know, size of a dime, a quarter, you know, small. That's it. A white canvas with a red dot on it. I, I don't get that. I don't. I mean, maybe somebody could explain it to me, but I guess in my in my head it, that has nothing in it, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. So, but uh, oh. This video is getting long. It's going to take a long time to upload. That first video I did, 12 minutes, it took four hours for me to upload that thing. And then the second video took about an hour. And I thought, oh, I'll keep them short. Uh, but I don't know. Today's Saturday, which really doesn't matter. What what doesn't matter that this is Saturday? It, it doesn't. I mean, not for me. I have no schedule or whatever, but uh, my daughter offered to let me come up there and upload my video at her house. She has, I don't know, some kind of satellite uh, internet, and it's a lot faster, so I'm not real worried about how long this video will be. I'm, I feel like I'm in a talkative mood, although I can... I can hear Petra. She's she's doing her deep meowing. She wants out, and it's it's okay that she's in there. So, uh, and I I guess really that's probably all I need to say today. I uh, last night I. After several hours, I, I got on, I, I posted that I had posted a, a video, I mean, a YouTube video. I posted that on my Facebook. So I had several of my Facebook friends go and look at my uh, videos. And I noticed that my subscription base had gone from three to 12. And I, I, I want to express to you uh, how I felt. I felt giddy. I was laughing. I was talking to my oldest daughter. And I said, I have 12 subscribers. 
I was giggling at myself for being so excited about it, you know. I said, I had this many views. Can you believe it? And uh, so, I don't know. What, what, do, what does that mean? Am I uh, seeking attention? Am I, is it just nice to know that people like you? Oh, I know people like me. I, I have a Facebook. There's people on there that re reply or respond to what I post when I post. Uh, I don't. I don't exactly know what it is, but it was very thrilling, you know. To and 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 for people to post comments, that was that was fun too. So, I guess. I, each day is going to be different. I, I'm, I'm still unsure of, of um, what this channel is about, and it seems that that's one of the important things about having a YouTube channel is uh, for it to be for some purpose. But I, I'm just flying on a wing and a prayer. I don't. I don't know. I'm just going to get on here and just talk about whatever comes out of my mouth. You know, I don't make notes. And I, I have maybe some idea of what I, I want to talk about. But I don't really want to follow a script or anything like that. And uh, I think, and I wouldn't mind going live because it's just straight out there. Uh, but I think you have to have... I, I don't remember, uh, maybe 300 subscribers and 4,000 hours of uh, views of people actually watching your videos. So, you know, that doesn't, that doesn't come quick, you know. So, but I think maybe I would just rather do them live rather than have to make the video and then upload it, which takes a long time and and all that. It's not, well, it's not like I'm doing anything, you know. I'm just here at home uh, doing whatever I want, you know. And uh, I'm enjoying that part of my life, you know. I've had several friends over the years, like my friend Ramona. We talked about doing things in our golden years. Let me take a sip of my coffee. Mm, it's gotten kind of cold sitting there. Um, and talking about our golden years, what will we do in our golden years and all that. And, you know, I know, you know, I'll be 70 this year. Uh, a lot of my friends are out. Uh, they travel and uh, are they uh, physically active, you know, playing tennis or taking bike rides or, you know, those sort of things. I don't do any of that stuff. I just... I stay at home, uh, watch a lot of YouTube. Um, I'm, you know, I like to read history books. Uh, about, I don't know, five or six, no, probably ten years ago. I said, you know, I'm getting older. I really love history. And even though I like uh, mystery, like... Uh, Oh, John Grisham. I, I, I like his books. And when I start one of those, I can't stop. And I thought, you know, I might not have that many years left. I need to be reading the books that I really want to read, you know. So David McCullough is my favorite author. And I've read several of his books. And uh, uh, John John Adams, that, that one is good. Uh Let's see. He wrote one about, uh, let's see, Sunday mornings or something. I got it over there. Anyway, it's a book about Roosevelt. I don't know. I like all of, uh, I like all of McCullough's uh, books. When I start reading his books, I feel like I'm there. And uh, I, I enjoy his, uh, the research that he's done for the book and you know, it's funny, I was reading a book about President McKinley. I was going to I was gonna finish my mother's uh, quest when she retired from nursing. Uh, she was a nurse's uh, aide from 19, 
1964 to 1984. And uh, she, when she retired, all the nurses said, well, what are you going to do with all your time? You're, you're going to get bored. And she said, oh, I'm not going to get bored. She wanted to identify all the trees on the property, and she wanted to read uh, a biography of all the presidents. So I thought, well, I'll take take that up. I'll, you know. So I started reading this book about President McKinley. Oh, it was so boring. It was, oh, I, I think I had maybe ten pages left in that book, and that's been like five years ago, and I haven't finished it. I just, I just need to do it. But it is for me. It is so boring. And as I was doing some research about something, and I came across uh, something uh, David McCullough said that he read that book about McKinley by this uh, female author. And he said that's what really got him interested in uh, history and, you know, writing about it and all that kind of thing. And I thought, Oh, gosh, he loved that book, and I hated it. And I'm so thankful that he didn't write the way that this woman did. She, and the reason the book was boring was because McKinley, uh, he didn't leave a lot of notes behind. He, he very rarely wrote, you know, notes, or he didn't keep a journal or any of that kind of stuff, you know. And, of course, John Adams, he and his wife wrote a lot of letters back and forth. And, uh, you know, he wrote about his trips when he uh, went to Europe. And and so he, the books about him are more interesting because there's, there's more uh, primary sources to, to get information from. But McKinley was just, a, I guess he was just a boring man. And so the biography about him was very boring. I mean, you had the facts. But the most of what the author used to write the book about McKinley were newspaper accounts. Well, you can't always trust what the newspapers say. Even back then, they were uh, uh, fudging things. Uh, so, yeah, that... That was a that was a tough book to read, and uh, probably one of my all time favorite books uh, is Undaunted Courage by Stephen Ambrose. One of my high school friends, Daryl, suggested that book to me, and I have read it twice. And even with my aphantasia, I was excited when I was reading that book. It was. <laughs> for me, having aphantasia of saying, I could, I could almost see the pictures in my head. I mean, I, I read it and I just felt like I was there, you know, on their on their trip, you know. And that book was so interesting uh, to think that when Jefferson sent uh, Meriwether and Lewis out to go on this expedition. Uh, he told them not to worry about bringing back silver and gold because there was no way to get it back. They were going to unknown places. They didn't know what was out there, you know. Steamboats hadn't been invented, and uh, he said, don't worry about that. You know, bring back, you know, whatever kind of, uh, you know, plants and, you know, all that other kind of stuff. You, you bring that back, but... Uh, I would suggest that uh, that you read that. If you don't like history, uh, that one might be an interesting one to kind of get your foot in the door or your toes into the water or whatever. But I found that one to be very exciting, and I I'm still thankful that Daryl suggested that I that I read that book. It's it, it's so good. It's so really, it's very good. Well, I guess I'll, I'll uh, end this video and I will go up to my daughters and uh, load this video. I, I hope you're having a good day, a good night, whatever time it is. 
Uh, I hope you're happy. Uh, I hope you've eaten something good today. Uh, I've had boiled eggs and avocado and toast and some almond butter and my black coffee. I always drink black coffee. Dark roast. My children say, say I drink tar in the morning. But, uh, yeah. So y'all have a, a good rest of your day. And thank you for listening to me rattle on. And uh, I hope you'll remember to subscribe. Uh, remember to like. And I'll see you next time. Bye.